Greetings, all Shane Bruce, Resto Ma Daisy with part two of reinstalling a Latigo loop on a Daisy Model 94 Red Rider. Now this is the gun we had out yesterday. I've gone ahead and put one oxide coat on it as an experiment, and I will probably remove that with a wire wheel and redo the experiment. It doesn't look that bad. Our efforts to pull some of the dents out were quasi-successful. I've still got one there I can't get to. Uh, on the back side, if you'll recall yesterday it was a herd of scratches that's been removed and it looks much better all right so to show you what the problem was with this particular stirrup on this latigo loop mount this section here is a bit long and i'll show you what i'm talking about we're going to install it here now i'm going to flip this over so you can see what goes on on the inside the uh, stirrup is a two-part affair on this part and inside the short leg actually binds on the interior carrier and that's what stops its motion of travel. This leaves us with an exposed section that's a little long, quite long actually, because by the time we install the gun in the stock, it'll stick up about that much, which means the Latigo loop's gonna flop around and that's not acceptable. So we're gonna eyeball that and say we're gonna take off, oh, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more uh, on the bandsaw so that we can bring it back over here and then peen it down to an installed height that'll be appropriate and a nice snug fit. So let's head over to the bandsaw and we'll nip off a little bit of this stirrup. Okay, we're at the bandsaw and we're gonna take our stirrup and we're gonna, whoa, we're gonna nip off just a bit of it so that it doesn't stick out quite so far. The old bandsaw is kinda noisy, but I think you can maybe hear me. As you can see, we're gonna end up taking maybe a sixteenth of an inch. All right, we're done with that, so it's back to the bench. Okay, we've nipped a little bit off the stirrup. Now we're gonna install the loop. We're gonna install the loop. We're gonna install the loop. We're gonna mount that in the receiver. We're gonna get it through the backside. There we go, and we're gonna push it through. All right, now let's back out a little bit because I gotta get this positioned correctly. All right, now, to peen this back in place, whoops. You gotta have it in place. So once again, we will slip it through there. Then we'll take it over. Yeah, I'm having issues. But we'll get this fixed. Maybe. Well, once we get it through the receiver, we'll be all right. This has turned into a real fiddly bit. Come on now. No, my fingers aren't quite small enough. You want me to get it? Nah. There we go. Now, the hard part is we've got to get that flat on the bench for obvious reasons. All right, now, as we can see, we have a smaller piece of steel sticking out. What we're going to do here is we're going to freehand this and peen it back in place. Now, let's get a wider shot out so you can see what it looks like. This is a ball peen hammer, oddly enough, and the dome shaped section is used to peen metal with. And what we're going to do is we're going to use it and we're going to strike the top of the pin. We're not going to hit it hard, but we're going to hit it repeatedly. What we're going to do is deform it so that that squared off piece of steel assumes a rounded shape. And that will increase the outside diameter of the pin and give it enough of a lip to engage the hole and keep this piece where it's supposed to be. So whenever you hear the word ball peen hammer, this is the kind of work that it was done with. And it's fiddly bits, but the idea is that as you strike the piece, you'll work it out to a point where it won't slide through the hole. And part of the art of it is trying to make it look like a nice dome-shaped piece, and that requires multiple taps. You gotta look at where you're landing, figure out where you wanna land next, Try to get all of those strikes done in such a fashion that the piece is crowned out. And I think we're about finished with this one. 
All right, so now we're done with our peening activity. It's a, it's a fair looking peen. I'll probably dress that up with a small file. But here's the, uh, here's the kicker. It is now not too wide. And it will hold the Latigo loop in place. So, repair completed. No damage done to the receiver. And we now have a Model 94 with a Latigo loop that stays put. Well, that's it for uh, working on Latigo loops part two on Daisy Model 94. Of course, this will work on any Red Rider with the saddle ring in the old style attachment system. That's all for today, kids. This is Shane Bruce with Rest of My Daisy, signing off.